Let me start just by saying that um, I'm actually delighted to be here. I've been off the reservation for the last three years, uh, working on population growth, mostly in the developing world. And um, it's great to come back and see so many uh, uh, familiar, old familiar friends and faces and names, um, and uh, I hope soon to return to my beloved ocean. Um, I wanted to uh, start, if I could, by plugging this book, um, Escape from the Ivory Tower. It's by Nancy Barron. It covers pretty much everything you need to know how to communicate your science. Um, she's parked at NCs, and there's a whole NCs crowd here, I'm sure you know her. Um, and she's a pro, and she goes all over the world uh, teaching seminars for scientists who want to reach beyond their peers, beyond their disciplines, um, and uh, reach a broader audience, and probably more importantly, um, policymakers. Um, and often what that means is making yourselves available to the likes of me. Um, uh, newspapers, magazines, uh, television reporters, you know, the, the dreaded mass media, the mainstream media, if you will. And uh, although newspapers, essentially the printed editions, or have been on the decline, as you, uh, you've all witnessed, actually more people are reading us than ever. They're just reading us online and generally not paying for it. Um, so politicians, uh, they continue to pay great attention to what we do. They credit us or blame us for often setting the parameters of the debate. And much of the blogosphere actually feeds off what we do. Now, um, science journalism is really just a small subset of what we do. Um, and um, the Los Angeles Times is one of three remaining papers that has a dedicated science desk. Uh, the other, New York Times and the, and the Wall Street Journal, and that's it. I mean, there used to be a lot. And I find science intriguing, um, but that puts me in the minority in the newsroom and the general public. Um, um, and in my, if you will, can you, can you all read that? The caption is, I don't know why I don't care about the bottom of the ocean, but I don't. Um, um, in, I want to just give you a peek into my ecosystem um, at the LA Times. Uh, 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 to get a story in the paper, um, I have to go through um, a gatekeeper, essentially an editor. Uh, and the editors decide where the stories are placed, including on the front page. Um, and they're pretty good surrogates for the general public, busy, distracted, um, you know, I would argue they're, they're a little bit different than one and a couple of courses. One is that they have much shorter attention spans and they're much crankier. <laughs> um, and why is that important and why should you care? It's because they determine where stories are placed. So obviously a story on the front page of a newspaper is going to get a lot more attention than if it's, um, you know, buried in what I like to call the vitamin pages. B12, you know, B6. <laughs> but more importantly, from my perspective, and particularly in trying to communicate, you know, trying to write about science, which is complicated always, um, the front page stories almost always have um, uh, more room. You have more room to write and try to explain things. If they end up in the vitamin pages, they get cut to smithereens, and so it's really difficult to, to, to explain something in any, in any depth. Um, so now, Generally, we think that we're actually very different, you know, that scientists and journalists, you know, from different planets, you know, and we certainly work in very different time scales. And now, can you all read this, uh, this cartoon here? But here you have a news crew on a daily deadline with a bench scientist. It's come back in a year or two, right? Um, now, I've been personally lucky um, uh, to specialize. And I've been able to do that over the last few years. But most journalists, and this is increasingly true, have, have, do not have the luxury to, to, uh, to, to specialize at all. And so this, this sort of dark throwing contest, today I'm an expert in you know, biochemistry, um, you know, um, blogging, um, uh, you know, foreign affairs, you know, steward systems, whatever. I mean, that literally happens. And yesterday, I came this close. I had to like, fight my way out of not getting dragooned into the coverage of the, the archdiocese uh, in LA and you know and the 10,000 pages of documents we now have access to and they said you've got to help and I, I anyway I was able to get it off but, but that's what I would spend my day was sifting through I had known nothing about you know about uh, you know this pre-scandal but so um, but actually I think that we have um, 
we, there are differences, of course, but the, we're, there's more, we have more in common than you know. Um, we both share a love of discovery, um, and we're analytical and skeptical, of course, and um, you, know, you want to be first in publishing uh, in scientific journals, and, um, and, you know, and of course, in the news business, we always want to be first in breaking any story. Um, we're highly, uh, uh, both highly independent and prize ourselves in that, uh, much, to the, uh, much to the chagrin of our bosses very often. You know, and the other thing we have in common um, is, uh, you know, was evident last night, um, and I was there to take note of this, and you know who you are. Um, but despite these similarities, um, we have a very, very different approach in reporting our results, essentially, our, our uh, conclusions. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. Um, now, you know the formula for writing a scientific paper. You know, you do a bit of little background, you, maybe you pose a question, and you go through page after page after page of methodology, and then you get to the conclusion and the end, you know, your results. And you know, when I'm out there looking at the poster session, I've got to read it like this, you know, looking at the, you know, it's very hard on the neck. We do exactly the opposite of that. And in fact, we call it the inverted pyramid. Um, you know, the results, the bottom line, that comes right up at the top, often the first sentence, the first paragraph. Um, and then next, what's really important for us is we have to explain why does this matter? What's the point? Who cares? You know, it's the, you know, so what uh, graph. And in fact, we have a name for it. We call it the nut graph. <laughs> it is so formulaic. And it's, um, and then if we have room, we'll put in the supporting material at the bottom. And you never know, especially if they end up in the vitamin pages, we have to cut some of that supporting material. So we want to get the news out there, the point of it, and then hopefully be able to back it up. So if you want to communicate your science, you need to be prepared to do a few things. Um, one is that you need, as, as Madalena said, to uh, talk about your results in a simple, but not a simplistic way. Um, it's your basic elevator speech, and you, you folks know about that. Um, but also you need to be able to put your work in context and explain why it matters. And this is absolutely key for folks, especially in the news industry, uh, the news business, to, to be able to seize on this. Um, and, uh, and then there's also, um, you know, so it's the so why question. And then there's something extra. And this is the intangible that's always a little tricky. Um, we need your help, basically, to sell stories to our gatekeeping editors. We're not in the education business. We don't write textbooks, right? We tell stories. Um, and what that, what turns it into a story, you know, it varies. And it varies in every situation. Um, sometimes it can be something new or novel, you know, which qualifies as news. Sometimes it's a, you know, it's a twist, a surprise, turning conventional wisdom on its head, that, that works. Sometimes there's action, uh, you know, drama, compelling characters. I mean, you folks know all of this instinctually um, because that's what makes you want to go pick up a novel or go to the movies, um, uh, you know, or, or sometimes even read a magazine piece or, or a news feature. Um, and this idea of compelling characters is really <coughs> key. This is if I leave you with one idea. It's that, um, you know, that our species uh, has, is really interested, we're interested in ourselves. Um, we're curious about each other. And so you need to shed your inhibitions, lose your fear, and be ready to come forward, you know, and be a part of the story in sharing what your science is about. Um, we, you know, science can be, uh, uh, can be dull, I'm sorry to say. Um, so we need to feel your passion. Um, we need to understand your motivation. We need to see your enthusiasm, you know, to help carry that story along and sell it to um, sell it to editors. Now, I would argue that you folks in this room actually have a secret weapon that most scientists don't have. Um, you've got it easy. <laughs> we love brain mammals. Um, we look into their eyes. We anthropomorphize them. Um, you know, even when they're fat and ugly, they're, you know, 
if only body fat and extra, you know, uh, hair uh, on our bodies look so good. <laughs> I, you know, high flying people are willing to go great distances and pay, you know, good money to swim with dolphins and manatees, and um, you know, rub noses with a gray whale. You know, and you you folks get to work with these animals, or at least study them and get close to them. You know, I mean, here's you know one of my favorites, Dave Jessup, mad dogging one of his longtime, uh, you know friends. Um, um, so, and even when things go wrong, terribly wrong, like, uh, like one of the blue whales that was struck by, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, I'm getting the sign here, um, getting stuck in the shipping lane, struck in the shipping lane in Santa Barbara uh, Channel. Um, we cannot help ourselves, uh, but want to know what's going on. Um, you know, essentially, uh, this turned this turned into kind of what I would call a crime scene. You know, with the yellow fluttering tape, um, and uh, you know, people were crowding around. And um, you know, those of you who do forensic work to solve this crime, um, you know, we find this fascinating. And I'm going to embarrass Frances Gollan, who just left for the airport because she can take it. But you know, I mean, when Frances, you know, has a hard time getting up on a spot, a slimy whale, you know, she improvises, right? This is not kind of typical office behavior. Right? We find this captivating. Right? So if you really want to uh, communicate, um, so you know, and, and it's very annoying when you're in the middle of collecting data, when you're trying to figure things out. To have a feel like a microphone shoved in your face and such, and I know you. We know you don't know all the answers, but you know the background, you know the patterns, and you can share. You can help us figure things out. Um, and so, if you really want to communicate to a broader audience, I think you need to be open to letting journalists tag along, to you know, to to exploit those opportunities when they come up, um, and to show people what they know and uh, and what you know and what's really happening. Um, and it's much more powerful to draw in the public rather than, you know, saying, well, come back in two years when we publish that scientific paper. Now, if I have time, I'm going to just run a really two minute, quick two-minute video. Uh, is that okay? And then, and then there's going to be a pop quiz, okay? So um, here we go. This is to show what I mean. New Schwander, the sea lion keeps getting lost. And the staff at the Marine Mammal Center in Sausalito thinks they know why. She was first discovered comatose under a pier in Avalon Beach. Treated and released, she was found a week later far from the ocean in Sacramento. A new type of toxic algae has emerged on the west coast that produces demonic acid. And as it works its way up the food chain, the neurotoxin is causing mass die-offs of marine mammals. It also damages the brain's frontal lobe. And that's why veterinarian Francis Gullen has brought Nushwander to Raytel Medical Imaging in San Francisco. An MRI will reveal just how much damage this neurotoxin has done. The brain scans confirm her suspicions. Us non neuroradiologists think she's got a little hippocampus. <laughs> We're becoming experts. Demolic acid causes nerve cells in the hippocampus to continuously fire impulses until they burn out and die. It's a cascading effect that produces seizures and abnormal behavior. Sea lions and other marine mammals are often referred to as the sentinels of ocean and human health. The sentinels are telling us something is wrong in the ocean. In the last decade, marine mammal stranding spiked along with the number of harmful algae blooms in coastal waters. Since 1998, the five marine mammal rehabilitation centers in California have been overwhelmed with cases of neurotoxin poisonings. And it's forcing people like Dolan to make decisions about which patients can be saved and which ones can't. The prognosis doesn't look good. I mean, I'm convinced that she looks terrible, but she's already gone up to Sacramento once. Right. Like, how much do you make a go through? I think the sensible thing to do is to give them I'm okay with it. I am too. I mean, that's how we do it, right? right. Okay. Okay. 15 cc's of sodium pentobarbitone, and New Schwander's suffering is over. One last exhale. And the 
to see Lion's heart flutters and stops. Another victim, another warning sign that something in our oceans has gone grievously wrong. So I want to ask you, what, what is that story about? Volunteer. Health of our oceans. The health of the ocean. And anyone else? Francis Gold. Francis Gold, right? Okay, anyone else? That's right. That's exactly what it's about. It's about ocean chemistry, right? That's really what it gets down to. I mean, it's about chemistry, and it's about brain chemistry, and you know, and it's about this critter right here that's been proliferating like mad, you know. Um, and let me just tell you that um, without the help of charismatic characters, and I don't mean just you know our fuzzy friends, you know, it's scientists like you. There is no way that I could get you know a front page story in the LA Times, you know, about basically algae. So, thanks very much. <laughs>